Russia's Luna 25 spacecraft has crashed into the moon after spinning out of control. Now, this happened hours after it experienced what the space agency described as an abnormal situation. The craft was preparing for maneuvers before landing. The mission was launched earlier this month as part of a race to explore the south pole of our planet's closest neighbor. And India's space agency says its moonbound spacecraft will land on Wednesday as scheduled. The craft, known as Chandrayaan-3, is also aiming for the South Pole. The region is believed to hold large deposits of frozen water. The space agency says it has successfully performed an important operation as it prepares to land. Elizabeth Pearson is an astrophysicist and news editor of Sky at Night magazine. She joins us from Bristol. Elizabeth, thank you for your time today. Uh, let's just start with the crash. Um, can you explain to our viewers and to myself why this crash occurred? Well, to be honest, no one's 100% sure at the moment. Uh, the, the landing wasn't supposed to happen until tomorrow, so it was before even it had attempted to make it its 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 landing. During at some point during its pre-launch checks, something went wrong that sent the spacecraft spinning, which made its orbit irregular, and eventually it crashed into the into the moon, um, which is an unfortunate set. Of circumstances to happen, and one that I'm sure Roscosmos will be launching a lot of mm. uh, committees to investigate exactly what happened. Why are they going to the moon, to the south? We mentioned the frozen water, but why is there now this space race to the moon? Because if you don't follow this closely, you think, well, the moon was a challenge a few decades ago, and yet we're seeing Russia, we're seeing India, we're even seeing the U.S. in what is a new race to get to the moon. This is partly because... As one, one space agency starts setting its sights on the moon, the others sort of start tagging along, um, partly to, to help each other out because space is big business. And if you can put a lander on the moon and NASA's funding a, a massive mission to, to launch people uh, to the moon by the end of 2025, they hope, um, then if you can prove that you can take something safely to the surface of the moon, then maybe you can be part of that mission. So that's one of the reasons why people are going. Uh, the reasons why they're all going to the South Pole is because there are these, these proposed water deposits. From a scientific perspective, that's hugely interesting because water is a fundamental quantity um, towards the geological history of our, of our planetary system and the, the history of life on Earth. So the more we know about water, the better. But it's also a really valuable resource for human exploration. Um, astronauts can drink it, but also you can split it apart into hydrogen and oxygen, which is rocket fuel. So if you want to go further out into the solar system, then it's a great place to, to potentially have a, a base, a long-term base on the southern pole of the moon. Well, you said astronauts can drink it. Is that a hypothetical? That is a hypothetical. Um, there has been evidence that there is water, what form this water is in, how it might be accessed, um, and how it could be made potable. That's a lot of bigger questions, and one of the first things that we need to do is, is send a mission that can land and investigate exactly what that kind of ice looks like. So who is leading this moon race 2.0, then? I would say it's probably NASA is definitely the biggest leader. Um, they want to send people back to the surface of the moon. The Artemis mission, the Artemis program, aims to put the first woman and the first person of color on the moon by the end of the decade. Um, and they are currently looking towards the first landing being in 2025, probably going to be more like 2026. But that is, that is basically the big driver of sending people back to the moon. During the Soviet Union, Obviously, uh, during the Cold War, I beg your pardon, obviously the Soviet Union and the U.S. were racing to get to the moon first, and that said a lot about their technology and just their overall power, clout, and dominance, right? Do, are we looking at it the same way today? Will the Russians be thinking, oh, this has been a major setback for us with respect to our rivalry with the U.S., or have we moved past that? To be honest, uh, because the... Russian space program has been a bit sidelined compared to NASA in the US. Um, it is more now that Russia is competing against places like China, like India, um, at, at, at that sort of level, um, whereas the US has a much broader, wider space program that's, that's heading out. Um, there is definitely a lot of competitiveness that's still going on in the space industry, but there's also a lot of collaboration that's happening as well. And I think that is important to re remember. Um, as I said, space is big business, and there's a lot of people all over the world who want to be involved in that business. 
Elizabeth Pearson, you are an astrophysicist and you're the news editor of Sky at Night magazine. We're thankful for you taking the time today. Thank you very much for having me.